Ladies and gentlemen, today I am brought in part by my good friend, Barricade. How are you doing today, Barricade? Always good, thank you, and yourself? Doing quite well. So we have both been playing the PTR. Now the second stage of the PTR is dropping on Friday, but before we talk about that real quick, how has your experience been with the PTR so far? Well, good, man, couldn't put it down. Um, already p clearing pit 100, um, Sork feels really good. Just excited, yeah, excited to see what else the, uh, the game gives me in the near future. Yeah, so how about you? Uh, it's going pretty good. We did talk about it on your channel a little bit in some detail about how we're feeling, but we, in this video, we wanna talk a little bit about what's coming on Friday as well, which is the yeah. rune words. Have you had a chance to kind of dig in and take a look at the rune words? I did, yeah. So I went through with the fine tooth comb as best I could with the time I had, and it looks awesome. I'm glad we're finally getting them. Uh, how about you? Did you go through that list? Yeah, I didn't look at all of them, but I did kind of pick through the ones that they show here in the patch notes anyway. I saw that, and obviously I watched the campfire chat as well. Now there has been mixed reception, I feel like from the no room words. Yeah, I know, no way. Yeah, no. yeah cause yeah, they're yeah. called room words and you're a big D2 player. You got like D2 better than D3 is my understanding, yeah? Yeah, it's not even close. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so let's talk about the mixed reception. So from my opinion, I'm glad Diablo 4 gets it. We've opened the door now. And so where we go from here is up to us as a community to give our feedback, uh, what the devs started with. I'll, I'll just, I guess we'll kick it off here. I'm not a big fan of cause and effect. What do you think about that? Like, So you're saying you like the generator thing, where you have a generator that makes Here's something. Here's what I say. Then yeah. yeah. These are just vol skills that have Path of Exile. It's what they are. You use a thing, you get the reward, you use the reward, you go back in, fill the meter up, right? So it's builder spender. And we see that in Diablo, uh, World of Warcraft with like every class is a resource builder spender, and now it's happening in Diablo. So there's ways to do it already in Diablo 2 where you didn't have to do that. You just got the thing, right? Like you just got the barb power. You just got the sork power. So the whole, like, as an example, Bak Ja, if you put these two things together, travel five meters, get some offering, get enough offering, you could teleport. Like it seems like a cooldown based system where a game like Path of Exile isn't. It's more rapid, more instant. Like they don't want to do cooldowns. They want you ready to rock and roll at a moment's notice. I prefer that. But now the door is open for rune words. So you chime in, tell me what you think, because I'm just... So my initial, my initial feelings when I saw him was like pretty positive. You have to understand, like I wasn't an yeah. OG D2 player, so I don't really have this feeling of like what room words should be. I just see a system being added to the game. And one of the things that I have thought since the beginning is we probably need either more progression systems or more ways to have depth to it. And I thought by looking at this, that this is one way to add an additional layer of complexity to the character. So my initial impression upon looking at this is was pretty positive, to be quite honest with you. And then I saw a video, I watched a video by, uh, I don't know if you watch Mr. Llama. Okay, but fantastic. Oh, Mr. Llama, yeah. Fantastic fellow, yeah. I love Mr. Llama. So I was watching a video, it's called The Haters Guy to D4, where he just talks about how like uh, the room words are not what they originally were, where you're like building these right. cool items and scaling towards Enigma and how the items yeah. are, you know, the room words you're training for other random room words. There's not like a hierarchy of room words. So I thought, you are you play D4, you like D4, and you also, yeah. you know, you play D2 a lot. So I thought giving an opinion from someone who has, you know, kind of been in both of them would be okay. rather interesting. But for me, I've been pretty positive. I mean, it's, it's an additional thing. Maybe they're not what room words were, but it's an additional system, and I like that. Yeah, they're not. They're not what rune words were. So, and, and I'm glad you like it. I like it too. Uh, in this case, more is better because I, I'm glad, like I said, the door's open. We have the system now. So just for anybody that might be a little bit foreign to it, okay? In Diablo 2, back in the day, you would create a rune word. So you take these these stones, right, that you'd find by killing, go up to a demon, smack him in the face, he drops a, a rune, cool. You pick it up, you store it in your stash, and off you go. And if you got enough runes, you could create rune words if you found out what the sequential order was that you combined the these things okay and the cool thing about diablo 2 is you could make a huge mistake you could put the sequential order wrong and next thing you know you have no rune word you bricked it it's literally two stones in your armor and it sucks but in diablo 4 they said in the uh the campfire chat you could take them out and trade them as much as you want yep. so there's not really the repercussion and there's so many like i call it like the, the ice skater kind of thing right we all like to watch figure skating and stuff and sometimes they fall down and that's fun to watch it sucks for them to fall but it's cool to watch and so when we're streaming or content creating people would make the room word wrong myself included and it's just it's such a holy shit like egg on your face moment but that's the cost of doing business with room words right if you get it right you could have a really cool item if you get it wrong why didn't you just take two now, more minutes a, to make that yeah here's a question on that point i want to ask you then is the the temporary bricking by tempering is another way to get it wrong, but not because of decisions you've made, I'm assuming. So 
Do you feel like the tempering getting an item brick feels entirely different than you accidentally yes. messing up the room words? I'm assuming you like like the potential mess up the room yeah. words. Don't like the potential of bricking. Well, like, well, like, yeah. So, like in tempering, like I didn't get to choose what the result was and made a bad choice. But in rune words, when I'm putting that stuff in, I did it wrong. It's like so I I'm the I'm the one that bears the burden of choice, right? RNG. It's kind of here's what you get. Hope you like the, the restaurant's menu, you know? And so they're not exactly the same, but in Diablo 4, it's a lot simpler. You have two slots on your gear. Two in the helmet, two in the chest, two in the legs, two in the weapon if you have two-handed weapon, and that's kind of what you do. The game in Diablo 4 at the moment doesn't allow you to have two one-handed weapons to have like uh, rune one and rune two, and they can also make a rune word because they have to be together, I guess. So that's that's interesting. Um, like I, as an example, uh, Feast and Famine, right? If you had one rune called Feast, one rune called Famine, you could get it. You could get a player power there. The game's not like that yet. Yet, I hope it go, gets there. Uh, overall, runes are sick. Glad they're in there. It's a starting point, not the ending point. I hope, and I'm willing to test it before I give it too much judgment. But uh, it is not the same. But really quick on that, to put a little button in it, it's like I don't just want Diablo 2 rune words again either. I want a new game. I want a newer version. I could go play Diablo 2. I could go play Diablo 3, and I could also play D4. So it should be modernized and should be interesting. And we're going to find out, I guess, if it's interesting enough. So speaking about finding out, the expansion is coming out here on, no, uh, excuse me, October 8th. I almost said November 15th. That'd be a different game. Something else. Yeah. That'd be a, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. a different yeah. release, yeah. I suppose. That's another piece. Yeah, big beast yeah yeah we did have a chance to play and we played spiritborn when we went yep. down there and tested it out and your experience of spiritborn i don't think i've had a chance to really talk to you about we talked just a True. little bit about it pre previous but how did you feel about the spiritborn testing it? and are you looking forward to that for the expansion uh yeah of course there's so many things coming out with the expansion the ptr kind of highlights that very well like if you think about it we're just testing what we're getting some new uniques we're getting some some new dungeons to run the ptr but to get to your question there's so much more stuff dark citadel under city rune words mercenaries raid bosses like it's crazy what we're getting there's a lot of game there um so did i like the spirit born yeah i did i think that the flashiest version was the eagle jaguar combo that just felt good i tried to make gorilla dude i spent most of our time playing gorilla and i tried to make something pop and it just didn't and i was like this feels bad but I bet you Gorilla is the best class for the end game pushing because of its tankiness and the ability to like um, take damage and deal damage. I bet you that's that's going to be very good. And then I played Centipede and I'm like, this is just insane. I looked over, I had Moxie sitting beside me. Actually, I was like, have you seen this? He's like, yeah, I've been playing it already. I was like, oh, I didn't know. Like, I just didn't know. I thought Eagle was the Chad. It's like, no, Centipede was the one because it was overpowered when we played it, right? So do I like Spiritborn? Yeah, I think it's one of the fastest classes or will be the fastest class in the game. I think it's going to deal the most damage. It's like the new Power Ranger, right? It's going to be flashy. It's going to be cool. <laughs> I got right? Power Ranger you know, vibes too. You have like the gorilla, you know, Jaguar, yeah. Eagle. It's you kind of had the different themes around it too. The one of the things yeah, that's coming with the expansion that's that I'm looking forward to is the Citadel. Originally they said that it was going to have exclusive rewards. And I thought that that meant speaking of bricking and tempering, the re-tempering scrolls, but then they clarified that those scrolls can actually drop outside of the Citadel. So from yeah, my understanding, yeah. the new like in-game raid content, the only exclusive rewards. I believe are cosmetic only is my understanding. Yeah, I believe so because this, if that's not the case, it'd be the first situation in Diablo four where you had to go to a specific place to get specific loot right now. If I think about it, you can get that anywhere, anywhere, like other than the butcher in the open world who drops his cleaver cosmetic or whatever, but even that, like, think about it. Where do you go in the game to get any unique? Anybody can drop it. So why would the Citadel suddenly be different? I think it's cosmetic only. Yeah, I think so. Do you think that having actual in-game power locked behind a co-op thing, uh, like the Citadel, for instance, would be bad for the game? Because I know you mentioned one of the stats is 85% of players are solo. So do you think they had to basically make that decision to make it cosmetic only and to not make people angry you have to play with somebody, basically? I think people are going to be pissed off regardless, but yeah. Diablo 4 is not an eSport. It's an adventure game. So log in and play if you want, get what you want out of it. It's fine. Uh, I don't think they had to do anything. I think it was an interesting choice this way like to make you group up and i'm curious to see because like i'm a, i played a lot of world of warcraft i led classic guilds and stuff but even with my entire wow career like the most fun fight was Var, uh, lady lady vosh in serpent shrine cavern passing the orb around and me relying on you to grab it and do your part that always felt good and so seeing how that works in diablo i'm down to try it uh again i don't, I don't know but it seems exciting and fun to make me group up with you 
I know what's going to happen, man. Like, what what happens in like League of Legends and stuff, right? There's going to be some elitism, some toxicity. Yeah, like. and with Party Finder, so now it's you're actually going to be able to get like randoms. So you get a random yeah. guy with you, and maybe the random guy sucks at the Citadel, yeah. and you're going to end up flaming. You know what I mean? It's going to be one of those. Like, how how do you not say like? But there's voice comms, right? And someone's going to yell at like oh, this true. could expose a lot of problems, right? So like, it, you might be embarking on an adventure you didn't want. But I think the reward is worth it. Like, you know, the altruism here. It's like, I really think people want to help. And so I think hopefully they're going to be a little bit more kind and say like, hey, man, here's how we do it. Stand here. Okay, cool. You're not doing it right. Try this. And like, we help each other, right? We have to be that community to to, to embrace that kind of change. You have to be willing to help somebody. So don't flame, man. Don't flame these people. Help them out. Just try. Try to be productive and positive and see if you get that cosmetic. So again, don't want to like circle the question too much, but I'm down to try it. And I understand why people would want a solo experience. I get that. Yeah. I get it, but I'm also kind of glad that we are getting more things that encourage teaming up like Party Finder. Because I feel like Diablo 4 was originally marketed as like more open world, more MMO-y. You know, maybe not necessarily a MMO, but it was marketed more as a way of having a more interactive world and running into other people. But then the reality is most of the time it just means a 5% experience boost because you're near somebody killing the Blood Maiden. So that's... Same, I agree. Like when I got in Diablo 4, I wanted to be riding on a horse and press that dismount attack and help a barbarian and kill a demon. Like that's what I thought I was going to play, right? And it's it like you say, it's not really that way. So this has to be that way now because you're not getting through that gate unless someone steps in the box. So yeah, like it, it, it's, it looks good. It looks good. Let's try it and see where it goes for sure. So one other thing that is typically multiplayer-esque is leaderboards. Like there's leaderboards in D3. D4 is sort of going back to the D3 roots. We basically have legendary gyms in the game now with glyphs, et cetera. So yeah. leaderboards around the pit is something that keeps seeing get shown up in comments where people are like, why don't we have leaderboards and you know, one, two, three, and four player leaderboards? Do you have a take on leaderboards? Do you care at all about leaderboards? Are you one of the people that, that so, cares about having them? I, I am a competitive guy. Like I wanna try to push myself to be better at my class and min max if I get the opportunity, right? Do I care about leaderboards? Yeah, I think they're good. Like Diablo 2 had leaderboards. I was never first, but I like to just give me a reason to play, get get yeah. on there, get a number, right? Just because like I'm a seasonal ARPG guy and it's fine. So do I think the pitch should have leaderboards? Yeah, I think it should. But I also don't want my game of Diablo 4 or your game to become an eSport. Like <laughs> so that's a hard balance, right? Like I don't think that that's the move. And I, and, uh, I hope it doesn't go that way here. I don't think it will, but... Um, well, what I liked yeah. about the leaderboards the most was you were able to you were able to look at people and like see the items yeah. they were wearing. So I didn't even yeah. really ever use the leaderboard as much as like, oh, he's higher up on the board than me. But like, I would just be like, what is this guy wearing? Like he got up there. How like, did he get there? Yeah. And be able to look at the equipment. It's almost like a, not like a build guy, but, you know, you could kind of pseudo get a take of what people were. And it's kind of refreshing because like you only know so much of, of what your character could do based off your experience if you didn't look at a guide. So yeah. when you right click on that profile, you're like, oh, that's actually better. Like Sun Wuko Monk does, oh, okay. Now I should look for that gear. And that's good as an adventuring player. Like you wanna go find that thing, right? So yeah, you're totally, like, that's, a, that's a great point to make, man. It's like, yeah, for that reason alone. But I'll add on the cherry on top. Like when I inspect somebody, I think, yeah, show me the gear, show me the skills, show me the Paragon too. It's only five boards now, right? So I want to see the whole snapshot of the character so I know what to emulate or adjust to get a better result. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, obviously I like it. For D3, that's pretty much how I did all my stuff. I didn't look up any guides. I didn't, I just kind of played normally, but I would look at people on the leaderboard and I would use that as my pseudo guide and I would basically emulate whatever the people that were pushing the most. Sometimes it was kind of confusing because you don't really get the dynamics behind like their they're doing some other interaction that you're not aware of of why that item works yeah. or whatnot. But you could, for the most part, you could use it just as a baseline to compare for yourself. I want to ask you about Friday. So Friday, we get the we get the room words. We get uh, the cheat the cheat guy, I think, that will unlock us to be able to do literally everything that we want in the game. And room words should be able to drop as well. Now, I know on Friday, we are actually going to be playing duo. I believe we decide at 5 p.m. EST which would be, yeah, right. I want to say right. 2 p.m. Pacific, if I'm not mistaken. Right. There. That's right, we, yeah, yeah, you and I. Yep, yep. we're going to be playing uh, as a duo from 1 to 60, try the pushing through the tournaments and see what that experience is like and how common room words actually end up dropping as we level yeah. through the system. So you can have the links all down below for that on Friday. But other than us testing the progression from the beginning to end with everything implemented in the game, what is it that you're most interested in testing on Friday with the PTR, with the full changes finally in the game? Do you have rumor combinations you're interested in? Do you want to try a completely gigachad min-max build with all the cheat? 
implemented? Like, what are you mostly looking forward to? It's a great question, man. Uh, so the fact that I'm already clearing pits 100 on the Sork, it's it's like, what else, right? Like, what do rune words actually do? How do rune words actually feel? It's probably one of the newest player power layers added to the game, so I'm excited about that. Uh, and how that might make classes I don't like playing as much feel. As an example, like, if I'm playing a necromancer and I finally get to teleport, does that actually just solve a lot of the problems in the in the gameplay experience of necro that I want? Like, do I do I war cry and give all my minions like multiplicative damage, attack speed, movement speed? Like, I'm gonna have to test and see. But I guess that's what I'm most interested in. And um, and I like the fact that the PTR is now updated so that we can actually enjoy that shit. Like, we don't gotta grind the tempers and the manuals. Yeah. We can actually just learn, right? Like, what a W that was because we know what the L feels like, and that shit's heavy. And so it's nice to have a a, a solid PTR that we can and wanted to interact with. What about you? Like, other than rumors words for me. Um, yeah, that's, it's all rumors for me. What about you? What's the highlight? Okay, so leveling processing would be interested in because I just took a one from 50 to 60 and started messing around with my companion druid. Like, so I haven't mm -hmm. done the one to 60 yet, which will be Friday. Yeah, uh, But outside of that, I really am going to use the opportunity to completely max out the companion druid because I want to know with the new passives and everything how viable companion druids actually are. I mean, they're in the best state they've been in, but that isn't exactly saying a lot for the companion druid. And that's just something I've been interested in since <laughs> the beginning of it. So now that it's yeah. the first time that we actually have like the cheat engine dude in the game. It's the only time that I'm gonna be able to go, okay, max literally everything. And yeah. let's just see, let's see how high the ceiling actually is to see if it one shots Lilith or you know what it does in Torment for. So that's pretty easily the thing I'm the most excited for. That and room words. I mean, I, I'm really, we started the conversation, I suppose we'll wrap the conversation on room words, which is, I like the implementation of room words. I have a feeling they might end up turning into this thing where there's just like three min-max combos. You just put the same ones in for literally every character. You forget about it. And then it's just passively sort of happening in the background. That could happen. But I'm- That was right. Like if if you look at what you got, like in, in ARPGs in my experience, like having mobility is very valuable. And then in addition to that, doing something when you get there that's strong. So like, yeah. the, it, it, so like the ability to teleport is like a no brainer. And then having the ability to do more multiplicative damage from the barb, that just seems to make sense. So like what else is left? I don't know, we're gonna wait and see because there are limitations on rune words, right? Like you can't, like in Diablo 2, you could have rune words galore, but in this one, it's limited. I think it's like two rune words per character or something. So I'll check into that again on Friday. We'll learn as we struggle through one to 60. Yeah. It's gonna be kind of interesting because there's ones like cast the skill with a cooldown. And so it's like, okay, yeah. well, if I make sure that I'm always using the ability that I need to be casted over and over again, it's going to cast that one again. Like, there, I feel like there's some stuff that could be kind of nutty. I hope, that's what I hope for. All right, my heart of hearts, whatever you want to call it. What I'm hoping for is, is room words are actually disgusting and they're not just like this passive thing and they're kind of, they, they seem OP. That would be fun. So that's kind of what I'm, that's kind of what I'm hoping for, to be honest. That head, like I'm seeing you, I'm seeing you 50-50 on that one. No, no, I just, I, I totally agree because the ideology of like, I am a rune word necro is so much cooler than I'm a necro that uses this rune word. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I get to be this, this, yeah, I get to be a necromancer where all my minions are engulfed in fire because that's what the rune word does. Like we're not there yet when I talked about the door being open, but I would love to see it get there. And then it, in addition to that, I'm a big proponent of like what Path of Exile is doing with with the party play. So like if I'm a barbarian and I jump towards a druid's volcano, I make more molten orbs. I always want more in the party experience. So if Rune Words is the bridge to get us there, like you have Rune A, I have Rune B, we have a shared barrier. Like things like that makes Diablo fun, makes me want to log in and play with DM and make sure that when he's ready to go, so am I. Because together we can crush the content, but solo I can't. And that doesn't exist right now, by the way, but I hope it does. <laughs> right. And if they scale rune words that way and they throttle the numbers, it could be a future in Diablo four. And I'm always fighting for that, that version of the game that I think would be more exciting for most people, regardless if you agree or not, I'm still going to fight the good fight. Yeah. All right. Well, Friday, we'll find out. Thanks for coming on for the chat. Barricade. We'll have a link down below Appreciate to the it, man's man. channel. Check them out. And uh, ready. I'll see you on Friday to see yes, exactly how the leveling in the rune words actually work in the game. So that's about it. Thanks Sounds for good, watching. Man. Adios. See you on the GGs. Next.